All around the world, this podcast goes out to all the girls, all the females all around the world. For those who don't know, Girls All Around the World, that's a song by Lloyd and Lil Wayne. It's actually sampled from a song from an even earlier age that I have no idea about. So that being said, what's going on with you? And by the way, if you hear the gust of blowing, a 30 mile gust of wind in the background, that is because I am recording this at my current day job of employment. Um, the place where I, where I use the money from to pursue my dreams as a podcaster, to be the greatest broadcaster of all kind. My name is JT. What's going on with you? How are you doing? Welcome to the podcast, the People's Paradise Podcast. How are you doing? What's going on with you in your world? Shout out to everybody who's listening to me live right now. What's going on with you? So once again, please do not mind the tumultuous sounds that are in the background. That is the sound of gusts, wind, trees, squirrels fucking in bushes. Ignore all of that. We're simply going to focus on me and you. We have a great conversation about what's going on, whether we're talking about Cardi B saying she's releasing her new album, whether we're talking about how women for some reason hate Asian men, whether some whether we're talking about how Steve Harvey somehow said he was mistaken for Tyler Perry and went into ball in his life, which I don't know how in the fuck that could happen, but it can happen. <laughs> I don't know how it can happen, but it happens and it happens. So with that being said, what's going on with you? How are you doing? Be blessed, be happy, be entertained, and going on. Um Basically, that's going on, man. I'm over here. Got three and a half more hours before I'm able to leave this leave this place. Right now, I have I have zero point zero nine cent in my bank account right now, and it feels very, very embarrassing to be a grown ass man and tell you that that's where I'm at right now with my funds. But yet and still, there is a nightclub about seven miles north of my location that I shall frequent tonight because they don't charge. It is a gay club, but sometimes there do be some bad females in there, and you got to be careful because some of them bad females happen to be bad sh- she he males, and you have to be careful. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be honest with you. At one point, I was in there because you can tell. Like, you can look at them and tell if they're hermaphrodites or not. Like the hermaphrodites are girls who did get like the plasma surgery and stuff like that. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would never fuck one. But there was one point because like the nowadays, see nowadays the girls who, the men who do become girls, they get like those big ass like, like inflated asses with like with like that chloroform, whatever that chloroform, uh, concrete play-doh, whatever it is. Now they be looking. I, sometimes I be looking at the masses and thinking like, maybe I should grind on it just to see what it's like. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I be thinking that. Sometimes, sometimes the thought does cross my mind because like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> what I'm being for real, bro. Like, I don't know because I will tell you, dudes out there who do. For those of you guys out there who are professionals, who are experts in the art of grinding, who are experts in the rubbing of their thigh pelvis on a girl's backside, hopefully consensually, I hope you ain't one of those aggressive ass gorilla Baku from Black Panther ass niggas who just grab girls by the waist and, and goddamn scorpion, get over here, pull them to get them to dance with you. Because as I have said before, that's called rape. But you, <laughs> but, but <laughs> I pray to God you're not one of those niggas. But, um, we're an expert in the art of twerking, of yiking, as we call it in the Northern California, in the region of Northern California, United States. Um, you know, a lot of the times, how good a girl, how good the grinding can't feel when you depends on how thick the girl's ass is. Like, if she hella thick in the rump, then oh yeah, it's going to feel great. And it also depends on what pants she got. I, I'm just being for real. I'm just being for real. It's just, this is something that guys think about, you know. That goddamn song by uh, Too Close that came out 20 odd years ago, uh, Next, Next, uh, Next, uh, it was called Too Close by Next. That song had a point. Like when he was like, Baby, when we're grinding, I get so excited. Ooh, how I like it. Try, but I can't find it. Like that song had a point, nigga. Sometimes when you be, man, you dance with the right one who put it down on you, who really put it down on you, man. I don't know. So, um, as you know, as yes, you listened to my last episode, my, um, my, um, this page of history of my romantic life and my romantic black book has been very stained with very, very, very black ink. I'm talking about Wesley Snipes black ink. I'm talking about Bernie Mac black lips black ink. It has been looking really, really bad. And, uh, I don't know, like, like I said, these last eight to nine days has been negative, you know, um, Hopefully, bro, I go to this club and I find somebody of significant. You know, I don't know. Maybe I should stop trying to find love with the club. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm in. I don't know. Like, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should do that. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm. I'm at the point. I'm at the point to. I'm at the point to all of that where it's like. I'm at the point. I'm at the point to all of that where it's like I don't know. 
at one point yesterday, I was thinking to myself, I was like, maybe I should just get famous and get to a point where I'm famous, where I'm of some status, where I can finally, like, bro, like, where I can finally, like, excuse me, maybe I should get to some point of fame or status where I can get to the point where I can marry a young lady or interact with a young woman and not, and not feel so pressure, especially nowadays, because, like, now, you know, and for all the girls out there who do like me, who are listening to my podcast and who are fans of me, you know, thank you for the DMs, you know, saying I'm cute and you love my voice and all this stuff. You know, um, I really appreciate that one girl said, you know, if your voice is deep, I wonder what else is deep. But I have no idea what the fuck that means, right? Actually, she said, she said, if your voice is deep, I wonder what else goes deep. Like, I, I have no idea what else goes, like, I don't, if you, I'm, I don't know, like, can I, I don't know, like, can I stroke deep? I have no, I have no... I have neither a blues clues of what she's talking about, but I will say that um, I don't know, but like I I'm 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 I am honestly in no economical 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 position to have a girlfriend right now. Like it is, it's just really not a good position right now. Like I'm in life right now. I'm just, I'm still trying to get to the. I'm still trying to build this podcast empire, man. I'm trying to defy the odds, and you know, I'm trying to defy the odds. I'm trying, and right now I guess I'm going through a phase where you know. Usually speaking, I go through depression a lot, and so a lot of times, like when I would deal with depression, I would deal with it by just trying to like make myself feel better. Because I know how to mentally reset my brain and make myself feel better, but I got to a point where sometimes I just sulk, like I just be sulking, I just be sulking and sad because it's like, bro, it's like sometimes I just I get tired of picking myself back up. Sometimes, you know. And shout out to my cousin Willie. I was listening to this podcast we was talking about. Sometimes you just feel stuck, nigga. I feel stuck. I feel like somebody just poured like a bowl of Gorilla Glue mixed with Elbers glue over my body in the bed and just left me there, nigga. I feel not even the bed. Sorry, my couch. I don't even have a bed. Nigga, it is bad. You know, I got my own apartment. You know, shout out to me for that. But you know, I'm. I don't know. It's it's um, it's different. Um. Thank you to all of you guys who've been really tuning into the Pe- People's Paradise Q and A's on um, on Instagram. I really appreciate the love I've been getting from that. Um, I really do appreciate that the love and the comments I've got. Shout out to Nicole. Shout out to Alex. Shout out to Jillian. Shout out to Ashmita. Shout out to um, I swear that last the last girl's name that I just pronounced. You would swear that's a black girl. She's Indian. I swear to God, I'm not even lying to you. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl, by the way. But um, and yeah, it's it's uh. I don't know, bro. It's uh, it's, it's a la, It's the most wonderful time of the year. Well, it was, you know. And I don't know. So I might go to the club tonight. I might go home and relax, chill, eat some sausage, bacon, turkey salad. I don't know. I think, you know, I was talking to somebody else about this. I'm just at a point in life right now where. I want my life to, I want my life to change. Like, I want my life to significantly change. Like, I've gotten to a point where I've just gotten so stuck in this rut where it got to a point where it's been hard for me to even imagine life outside of the way it is now. And I just, I want to be able to see, I want to be able to not look, have to look up at the sky and see it and dream. I want to be able to look around me and see the things that I dreamed about. Like, I remember it was a quote that Drake had in the song, not the one, not the one where he said something about, um, I only love my mom and my only love my mom and my bad girl. I'm sorry, which is them some selfish shit. But um, um, that's some very selfish shit to say. But when he said in the song, he said, "You know it's real when you are who you think you are," and that's the point I want to get to in my life. I want to get to the point where I am who I who I dream I am. I am who I think I am. I think particularly when you're an artist, when you're a podcaster, whether you're a rapper, singer, painter, sculptor, artist, and a lot of times we have sensitive egos because you know. Artists were very sensitive, but for those of us who have to put our work out on the line, even if we are sensitive, even if we have low self-esteem and have a low self-image of how great our art is, we have a certain je ne sais quoi, a certain, I don't know if it's a spiritual compass, a spiritual compassic arrow that guides us and lets us know this is what you're doing. This is what's letting you, this is, you're doing this, this is right. And that's the feeling I got ever since I fucking began podcasting. Ever since I first even conceived the idea of me working on the radio. It's because I just knew that this was what I was supposed to do. I, I that, that compass, I call it the, I don't know if you want to call it the compass of destiny, the, um, the compass of destiny, the destined compass, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the guide, the guide, the guide of God, the guide, the God's, God's compass. I call it God's compass. God's compass. That's a good God's compass. It's God's compass. I think, I think all of us have a God's compass. And, and once again, it, it may be a case by case basis because some of us might not, you know, some of us might not want to go by the God's compass thing. Some of us want to just do a job that provides us with a living and that's good. But you know, my thing is I've always going to do a job that makes me feel fulfilled and makes me know I'm here and we be in a, 
me being in this field of what I'm doing, of letting people, the reason why I do what I do, because a lot of people hit me up and like, why do you want to do this? Why are you so interested in this? The reason why I do this is because I've all, I want to be that guy just, it's something just so deep, my nigga, about just being that guy that like when it comes to podcasts and like that people are listening to just regularly, bro. Like being that nigga, bro, like the people are just, not that nigga, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to curse. But being that man that people have played in their car and listened to on their phones, like, I love the idea of people of my of my podcast is playing from somebody's phone while everybody sit in the living room drinking Starbucks chai chai latte. Like I, I love I love that idea, bro. Like I love that I I love that I love it just envisioning that. You know, shout out to Togo Sandwiches by the way. There is a beautiful cat sitting about four or five meters away from me, and she's probably gonna walk up, but she's so cute. Well, oh, she stopped. But anyway, so that with that being said, it's kind of I don't know. So I don't know. I think that's the point I want to get to in life. I want to get to that point where. Like I say, I, I think I think that's what life is about. At the end of the day, you have to find your God's compass. We all have the, we all have a God's compass, and it guides us to certain things. And even if you just take it out of spiritualistically, take the spiritual aspect out of it, you know, there are all those people who say the one way to find true happiness is do what you love. And honestly, I believe that's true. It does satisfy. This satisfies my talking to people. This satisfies my fucking spirit more than anything else. And that's why I'll be telling you guys like. Please promote me. Please share with people. Please let me. Please let people. Let these people know who, who, or who in the Frosted Flicks that I am. Because outside of loving Cocoa Puff cereal, I love doing this. I love doing this. I love talking. And so I want the world to be involved with this. I want this not to just even just be like a podcast with four or five dudes in, in South Stockton listen to. I want this to be a movement, like some actual movement. Like I have a team. I want to do merchandise. I want to have a store. I want to have smart cars. I want to buy Birkenstocks. I hate Birkenstocks too, by the way. For those who don't know, it's just like this very popular sandal that, that white people wear in San Francisco. Anyway, I, I just want this. To, I just want this to be. I want this to be big, and I, I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know. Like it's ah, I'm over here. I'm over here about to cry. Why are you guys making me freaking cry? I don't want to cry, but you guys are making me cry now. You know. I just I, I did I did I did want to get emotional. I did want to get emotional, but you guys let me fucking lose my stuff, bro. So that being said, now let's talk about some pop culture stuff. I don't want to um I don't want to be too spiritual and spiritual and holistic on the pop culture on everything else. Let's go into some more pop culture things. Um, pop culture for the last four to five out well from the interval of time about four a.m. to seven a.m. Nigga, I was playing Assassin's Creed Origin on my cousin's Xbox One, and let me just say this right now. That be one. That might be one of the few games in the world that I'm addicted to. That game is so amazing, bro. I love playing it. I, I, I just for those of you guys who know me personally, you guys know I don't play video games like that for real. Like I just just because I'm not good at them. I've never been good at video games. I was always that dude. They, they used to call me. I was a, a bonus kill. Like if we were playing Halo Two, Halo Three, Halo Four, Halo Eighty Nine, I don't know. If ever, if ever I picked up the sticks and hopped in with a group of niggas, they know. Oh, here come my bonus kill. Ping, ping. And, and I, 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 I don't. I mean, I, I, I don't know why. I've, I've just never been good at video games. I mean, even Assassin's Creed Origins. I keep wanting with you. I ain't good at that. I ain't good at that damn game. I just enjoy it so much because I love the historical aspect of it. I love the. I love the world. I fell in love with the world concept. Ever since Assassin's Creed came out in 2007, even then, for those women who are listening to me live right now, who have no idea what I'm talking about, because you guys all have lives, you all are getting steadily dicked down by men that you love, or men who are at least 8.5 attractiveness in the face, I understand that this might not interest you, and I understand. But I'm going to talk about something more that might interest women. Matter of fact, I always talk about guy stuff on here. Let's, let's, talk, let's, talk, let's talk to the women. Let's see how the women is talking. So... Um, I did a poll on Instagram and I was talking about, you know, why do women like tall men? Why do women like short men? Why do women like black men? Why do women like this type of men? And we actually had a really, we actually had a, I had a really, I had some really inter- interesting, um, I don't say debate, but, um, I had some really interesting convo with some people about that. You know, some people were a little irate. Some people were a little like, you know, what you trying to say? Girls ain't fucking with short niggas. You black wood ass nigga. You, nigga I knocked your tall tree ass down, nigga. You can get your shit split, nigga. I'm like, hey, bro, calm down. And for those men out there who are vertically challenged, <laughs> I mean, hopefully you're not vertically challenged and horizontally challenged, bro. It's not like you can't, it's not like you can't, you, it's not like you can't, it's not like you can be short. You can't be short in both females. 
And it's not like you can't be short and pull beautiful women at that. I've met a lot of short men that when they talk to, sh- I've met a lot of short women that have short men that have beautiful women. You know, my brother, my I always tell y'all, my older brother Keyshawn, you know, he always pulled. I can I can think off the top of my head three women: Tamaya, Sharon, and the other girl, then Claudia, who wanted my brother's dick so bad but would not give me the time of day. And he's five to seven. I'm six one. I felt like nigga. Surely you should give me some type of uh, acknowledgement, but you know, nigga, I, apparently I did not deserve that. You know, it's you know it is what it is. I kind of um. I don't know, like I'm kind of, like I said, I've always, I've always kind of, uh, I don't know, I've always, I, hey, man, I mean, hey, I've always kind of, I've always kind of, I don't know, I've always kind of had that kind of like a little, like a little bit of a, um, I just always noticed that, but granted, here's the thing about that, realistically speaking, I always tell people this all the, I always tell people this all the, hold on, I always tell people this all the time, this is what I've been saying for the longest time, I've been saying this for the longest time. The thing about the world is what women, what women say they want, what women say they want, and what women actually. A woman might say, she, "Okay, here's the thing. Let's just be. Let's just keep it all 100 with all of us. All of us. Everybody be honest with everybody. Black people be honest with black people. Black people be honest with black people. White people be honest with white people. Squirrels be honest with with squirrels be honest with geckos. Here's the thing. We all have ideal physical symbols." physical symbols of what we want that we want to lay with that we want to conquer that we want to lay with in the bed and perform missionary position on say for example i want kim kardashian i want kim kardashian i want to have sex with kim kardashian i think she's one of the most beautiful women in the world i would love to marry her i think she's beautiful now the girl that i did an episode about eight days ago jessa she don't look like kim kardashian but i still think she's beautiful and i still even to this day even though she gave me a l i still would love to have her hand hand and date her like i i would love i would love to clap in them cheeks like she's just beautiful to be like i and then but she don't look she don't look nearly as pretty as kim kardashian but i still date her it's the same thing with my brother i'm pretty sure every girl that he talked to one of the six foot five ass nigga who played football for the rams and had an 18 billion dollar contract but no they sent him for a five foot eight black guy who has a hairy very handsome face but a nose like a bull and played basketball for high school in sacramento california so you know what i'm saying so it's like it's not it's not the um it's not <clears throat> sorry so, you, you, but you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not like we don't have to. The point I'm trying to make is, and this is what I want young girls to understand when they listen to this too. Don't tr- the thing. The thing that irritates me so much about the world we live in now, with this pressure that a lot of women have on them, with a lot of with the pressure that a lot of these women have to be beautiful, to be pretty, to be attractive, is young girls, 14, 15 year old girls who are going to high school, even the 12 and 13 year olds who are going to middle school. They're going to school every single day, coming back home, scrolling on their phone on Instagram, looking at these unreal, damn near impossible expectations of beauty put on that they feel like they need to have, whether it's getting whether it's getting concrete play doh stuffed in their ass, whether it's getting getting their titties filled up with watermelon juice. They want to get all these all these unreal expectations that they feel like they gotta meet and it kinda makes them see feel like they and also, and it makes it makes them feel like I have to be like this. And also, reality is there are girls out there like me, like myself, or like you, who have physical who have physical issues that they probably feel. Well, we all have flaws. I've never met somebody who didn't have flaws. Like for for example, I have very fucked up teeth. I have a very beautiful face. It ain't beautiful, beautiful, but it's it's a hand. It's a it's a good looking face. Great jawline, great nose. I mean, great jawline, great chin, great eyes. Nose a little bit wide, but it is what it is. I, I, th- I blame it on me being black. So that being said, so that being said, I, but I have fucked up teeth. I have terrible fucking teeth. I have terrible fucking teeth. I'm talking with the lisp right now as I'm talking to you. I have terrible fucking teeth. I have big ass lips. My lips look like my lips. My lips. My lips is the my lips is the side. My lips look as big on my, my as, on my face as dumb as Dumbo's nose looks on him. We all have physical errors. The issue is is. And this is the gift that God always gave me is a lot of people don't know how to look from outside themselves and see how how critical that error is to how beautiful they are. So say, for example, I got a cousin. She used to always say she has a big nose. And like I told her, you have a big nose. I told her you have a big, a bigger than average white person nose. Yeah. But the catch is, like I told her, your face would look weird if you had a if you had a smaller one. It just would look right. Like she has one of those noses where I don't know how to explain this correctly, but like. 
the width of her nose matches the width of her lips, like in a perfect symmetric, like symmetricality. And like I told her, if you had a smaller nose, bro, it would just look weird on you. It just that just doesn't look weird. It's the same thing with Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson got a Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, in a lot of ways, look like look like look like what happens when you give a kid a melted subway sandwich and just have them just go ham with it and just start messing with. It. Like he, his face looks like when you give a, a two year old boy a, a melted subway sandwich. Like it just looks crazy as hell. But I promise you, I promise you. To the day he died, if somebody would have asked him how if he looked better than he did when he was when he was still black, he would have said, "Oh, I look much better. I look so sick. I look so beautiful." Matter of fact, everybody told me they love me. Bubble said he loves my face too. Like you know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of time, a lot of times, a lot of girls they can't see they can't see the um they can't see how much of what they look like is an actual blessing and how much of what they look is an actual curse. Let's say for example, I'm dark skin right now. You know, it's a common thing to say, like, it's a common thing that light skin dudes, light skin dudes are running and dark skin dudes are unfavored. And sometimes I think about that. And sometimes that messes with me, I guess. The only reason that that doesn't bug me, even though people crack dark skin jokes on me, is because I know for a fact I can look upside of, I can look outside of myself being dark skin and I can look at myself and tell I have very beautiful skin. Like I have very beautiful skin. I'll tell anybody that. And, then I, and, and that's not just naturally. That's from and I've been telling you guys this for the longest time and I'm going to end the podcast on this note right here I've been telling you guys for the longest time aloe vera gel saves every fucking thing I keep telling you guys what you guys need to do is get you a six dollar nine dollar bottle of aloe vera gel from Walmart CVS or Target whichever store is nearby you that sells it and put that on your face and rub it in put it on your hair rub it in your face put it on your face and rub it in rub it in gently and go to sleep with that bro I promise you it does wonders for your skin I don't have acne I don't have blemish my skin I look like a fucking candy bar nigga I look like nigga I look like what inspired Hershey's nigga I'm telling you like I look sexy so with that being said I'm going to end the podcast on this note thank you for listening thank you for being a part of the family thank you for enjoying me thank you for entertaining or enjoying my content I'm going to say this again. Please listen to me. Please click that share button and share this podcast. If you're listening to me on YouTube, share it. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. Tell Iggy's about me. My name is JT. I love you. I There's a lot of love in my heart for you. And with that being said, this has been the People's Paradise Podcast. We are out of here like we out of here. We out of here like Coltrane, baby. R.I.P. Coltrane. Nice talking to you guys. So, yeah.